X Men. X Men's. The first one. I haven't seen the this for so long. It's probably been six, seven years since I've seen it, I would say. I don't even know. Because when X Men 3 came out, I haven't seen it since then. Because X3 was so bad. Yeah, I I think I've only seen X3 maybe twice. I think I've seen this X Men ten times. Okay. Because back, I mean, back then there wasn't a whole lot of comic book movies, and that, and and for the time, I thought this was a great movie. Yeah. Well, I think it is actually pretty good. I actually really well, no, enjoyed it, watching it. it again. Most mostly, yeah. I, I do have some issues with it, but nothing, nothing game breaking. Yeah game breaking um <laughs> movie breaking I don't know. um yeah no i think x-men one is a pretty solid entry into the x-men movies i think they're so you can kind of break it down into three trilogies right the whole x-men yeah. series you have the x-men one two and three then you have days of future past i don't know uh first class days of future past and apocalypse and then you have the wolverine trilogy yes and I think in each trilogy, like, so in the original trilogy, the first is the best. In the uh, first class trilogy, Days of Future Past is the best. In the X-Men, yeah. or the Wolverine trilogy, the third is the best, which is Logan. Yeah, I agree with that. They, like, they don't have any good structure. They're just like... Yeah, they're kind of all over. They kind of get lucky. Well, that's that's one thing about all these X Men movies is they really didn't do a whole lot of planning. No, which I don't blame them. I it don't was, think it was frustrating they movie, watching. They this. were planning on doing like ten movies. Yeah. Um, because they, I know they they kind of have it out with Wolverine having amnesia, right? So he yeah. doesn't have to remember Sabretooth. but that's a big part of the movies coming up. Is his relationship right. with Sabretooth in the war and, you know, like being basically brothers and. Right. But then there's also Perse- Professor X had a relationship with Wolverine in the past. Although it's supposed to, I don't know, the whole time travel thing really screws up timelines. Yeah. It, there's just a. There's a lot of inconsistencies with Professor X in general. Yeah. If you look at the three. Well, Patrick, trilogies is part of the same universe. Patrick Stewart tweeted out a while ago a picture of him and James McAvoy. And he was like, mm-hmm. how does James McAvoy turn into me in five years? Or whatever. <laughs> what, like, he's like, he, yeah. he must have a really rough life <laughs> for that to have it, happened. It's going to get real rough. Because, or maybe it was like 10 years or whatever. Because when the first X-Men came out, it was only 10 years after the last... Or after Apocalypse. Is that... Uh, is it really? Well, yeah. So I think it was like 2003, right? X-Men came out. And the end of Apocalypse is like the early 90s. Yeah. So it's just... Yeah, a, other than that, and then in the first Wolverine movie... Uh, Origins? Just Wolverine? I think Origins. it's Origins, yeah. You see Professor X... Not CGI. He's like perfection. Patrick. Yeah, that's so he's, weird. He's essentially Patrick Stewart, but not in a wheelchair yet. Yeah. But then in First Class, he's James McAvoy. But then at the end, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. It's all. It's kind of all over the place. The only thing they really got going for him is Hugh Jackman is pretty consistent throughout the whole thing. As far as he doesn't look like he's aged, so it kind of works. Well, he gets in better and better shape with each movie. Oh. It's, yeah it's insane like he's in good shape in this first one but he looks like yeah. a fat slob compared to himself in the <laughs> the latest ones thinking about him in the in the other ones i'm like yeah this is i was like i kind of can look like that <laughs> if i wanted to you know you couldn't um <laughs> but no figure. let's let's go through the first x-men movie okay uh, it starts off with rogue making out with a guy and almost killing him no it starts out with world war ii concentration camp oh yeah so i was gonna watch this with my kids because we've been watching some of the marvel movies um because yeah. my wife she didn't watch any of the phase three movies so she hasn't seen infinity war yet she hasn't seen any of the phase three so we've been oh, catching really? up yeah because that's we phase three started around the time we started doing the podcast so i just started seeing movies in theaters by myself so we could talk about them 
Yeah. And so she just like missed out on seeing them. And so we've been catching up. And what are her thoughts on the comic book genre? She she thinks they're okay. I don't I don't think she like has a fan. yeah strong opinion one way or another. But we've been catching up. But our kids have been watching them with us. Um, yeah, and they like them a little bit here and there. And some of it's scary. Some of it like you know might be too intense. But for the most part, they're pretty good for them. Uh, I started X Men with that in mind. Like oh they you know they could handle these other movies. This will probably be fine. It started yeah. with the at the concentration camp with the kids getting taken away. I was like, nope, let's turn this off right now. Yeah, this we're is, not going to do you, this. You can't, you can't watch this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Eric Magneto gets taken away from his parents because he was Jewish, right? I, I don't think they're like explicit that it's a concentration yes. camp, but he gets taken away, separated, and he gains his power in that moment. I don't is know. That if, when he gained it? Or is I that thought when he so. realized it? I thought he gained it. Or, well, like, that it, that it came out or whatever. That, right. uh, that moment of stress is what like kicked it off for him to be able to use it. Obviously I think he, I don't think he evolved instantly, but I think that's when it like, he realized he had powers to manipulate metal. Um, which, yeah, which is a, is a good scene. It's a good way to jump in. It's a decent cold open. Um, well, because he, he is, he has always been driven by anger. Yeah, I think Magneto is one of the best, if not the best, comic book villains. Because oh, no, for sure. He's he's definitely one of my favorites in the X Men series. Yeah. But overall, Marvel, he's fantastic. He's got and old. He has a power that is uh is scary, right? Like it's a legit concern. Yeah. He has motivation that is legitimate and reasonable. And you can follow, like you can follow you can him get behind him. Yeah. yeah, and he has charisma to where you like actually like and enjoy when he's on screen. Like if you, all these things are like really hard to make work together because anytime Professor X and Magneto are together, it's like their chemistry is so good, and you feel like they are old friends. Which Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen, I think, are actually well, i think good they're friends. like really amazing friends and then uh but, james mcavoy and um michael fassbender are also like yeah. so good together and so oh, on screen sure. their relationship is always so dynamic and it like really makes you appreciate him as the villain because you want him to turn good and that's what villains should be you should your desire shouldn't be like we need to overcome this guy we need to destroy we need to kill him it should be like oh if only he was on our side you know if only he was a good guy then he like yeah. that's the ultimate type of villain that you should have in a movie but i i'll be honest when i was younger like a kid when i didn't yeah. i didn't really know much about comic books or anything yeah i thought wolverine i thought his name was x-man <laughs> i didn't in know movies? it was like a group i yeah. didn't know no but even before the movies came out oh you're dumb I, yeah, I was really dumb. I, yeah. I didn't know it was like a group. I just thought he was X Man, uh -huh. and I thought it was cool. That's because he always does that X with his hands. That's exactly right. <laughs> He's um, always the title title guy. So yeah, well, he, every movie becomes his, which is going to be oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, so Fox Very got bought out by it. Disney, so it doesn't yeah. really. But he retired. But I think. He was tweeting when all that stuff was going on that he wanted to be in the Avengers movies. So there's potential that he might do it again, but Logan was supposed to be his final send off for the character. So it'll be And I think it, I think it should be though. I think Logan is great. But that's my favorite one. If they bring back Wolverine, I would love to see Hugh Jackman do it again. Oh I, yeah, at this point it would be Unless he strictly said, well, uh, even if he says that, I just, it should be him or no one. Don't bring it back if it can't be him. Yeah. He's, he made the character into what it is. Who would be the and worst it, person to play Wolverine? Uh, Toby seconds. McGuire. Ooh, that would be a pretty bad one. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Think of someone who is, popular now okay i already named it. it's the rock the rock is rock. <laughs> the wolverine <laughs> someone who's famous and popular right now yeah. but isn't a character yet it's well, gotta be the rock wolverine's supposed to be like 
five foot tall. Yeah, he's supposed to be really short. So it could be Tom Cruise. Uh oh, jeez. You don't even have to do I don't CGI. Know if I could get behind that. That's true. <laughs> um, or Sylvester Stallone. He's another shorty. Uh, but yeah, so Sylvester I, Stallone is already a character in the Marvel Universe. Oh, that's right. He's in Guardians too. Um, yeah. I think this movie, X Men, does a really good job at being a like a start, like almost like an origin story, because it's yep. Rogue's origin story. Yep. But you come into the world that feels lived in, right? Like the X Men are already yeah. a thing. The school has been going on for a long time. Uh, There's already conflict and all that. Yeah, Professor X has a relationship with Magneto. Like you're you're coming into a world that feels uh filled out right like there's a lot of stuff going on and you're learning about it as you go which is kind of what black mirror does right every time they bring you into a new world they're like oh there's more going on than what i see and it makes it very engaging to the story um but i think what they end up doing overall makes it a little goofy because for how lived in it feels, they just abandon a lot of the things from the first movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mystique becomes a main character in the second trilogy, but is not, doesn't seem very important in this movie. And so, like, going back and rewatching it, it's like, oh, this is cool, but why do it this way? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, when you first saw this movie, what was, do you remember what your impression was? Um, I think I liked it. I think I was scared of the, uh, the blob guy who like gets turned oh, into yeah, it, Bruce Davison. Yeah. It was like very upsetting. That, when that I saw was it. a frightening scene. Yeah. yeah. Getting them all blobby. And did, did you see this movie in theater? I think so. I don't, I don't remember. I'm trying to remember if I did. I, I want to say that I did not. Yeah. And if that's true, then I probably just saw it at your house. Yeah, that's a, that's I a good. Did watch that. a lot of movies like this <laughs> at my house. Um, but what what is your opinion of this movie? You like it? You don't like it? Um, I've always liked it. I still do like it. I think the story is good. Yeah. The only thing that kind of to me didn't hold up as much as maybe like the the fight scenes like the choreography yeah it choreography. feels really it slow and slow and kind of just corny it was all like anytime someone got punched they flew too far i hated that yeah the you whole could, like arms and legs out in front of them flying yeah. backwards yeah the, or like you get hit and they kind of helicopter spin yeah. like five times in there <laughs> um, um so yeah, I'm not a not a fan of that. Yeah. No. Um, and I guess that's probably compared to the kind of fighting that we see now in these movies. Like Vin, it wasn't something noticeable to me, yeah. but I was also like 12. Yeah. But I think the story is still good. I like. Well, it's very violent compared to how it got. Because I remember them talking about how like, oh, Logan, he's finally using his claws, and you know. Like you finally see what it would actually be like if someone with claws was attacking people, you know, chopping heads off and cutting body parts off. He's st- yeah. like stabbed and cut and did a lot of damage to people in this movie. Oh yeah. Um, and I think more than the others in the other more like most, I think he like punches people in the chest and it's like implied that it stabs them. But like you That's see, a lot, yeah, bloodless. You, yeah, I mean this is bloodless for the most part but you see the blades like coming out the other side of people and like there's actually impact to him having the the claws which i thought was a good choice yeah yeah but i think all of these should be are not x-rated r-rated i think all the they should have been from the beginning yeah and same with like the dark knight trilogy i think that should have been r-rated although it did it did the Joker being having to be PG thirteen, I think, made him scarier. You know, because it like they had to work around more stuff. Implied things and, and yeah, instead of actual on screen violence. But Logan being R rated, I think, really serviced the character well. Yeah, no, for sure, it was definitely 
it, it, it helped it go out on, on its high note. Yeah. Nothing was muted. Nothing was held back. I did. I really enjoyed uh, Cyclops and Wolverine's relationship in this movie. I wish they would have uh, made that a consistent theme because it's throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Cause it is part of it in the comics and stuff, but they, them being at odds the entire time is so funny to me. And I think they could have oh, gone yeah. a lot harder with it too. And have been not as well. So there's a, a theory about this movie that it was supposed to be kind of a campy movie that it wasn't supposed to be serious or dark or like grounded. Yeah. And they changed it in the editing. And so that's why there's a lot of weird moments throughout like uh i think one of the things is storm says do you know what happens to a toad when it gets hit by lightning and then she goes <laughs> same thing that happens to everyone else and then shocks it with lightning and i think there's that was like part of it like that was like a tongue-in-cheek type of like goofy thing and they were like no nah, you know what let's make this realistic let's make this dark what would it actually be like and I think that's definitely a, a campy line for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, that's a terrible, that's terrible writing, but you know, what are you going to do? Clean up on aisle five. <laughs> uh, what did you think about the other villains though? You had mystique, uh, saber tooth and toad. So I've always liked mystique. I think that's a great character. Just the like unlimited capabilities. You essentially. just like her cause she's naked. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> and I've always really been into blue people. Yeah. So it kind of combines both of those fantasies. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't care for this saber tooth. Because like of his eyebrows? Like, yeah. I, well, and it, he just looks like a Neanderthal. Yeah. Which is, it makes sense. It, yeah. it, it's a prehistoric animal. You know, he looks like a caveman. That's fine. Well, Leif Shriver is like the perfect saber tooth without oh, prosthetics, that, well, without that's makeup. That's why coming back to this, I was like, oh, this just isn't fun at all for me. Yeah. And then Toad is too, almost too goofy of like a, of a character to take seriously as a bad guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he doesn't seem like he should be as high up in Magneto's ranks as he is. Yeah. He doesn't seem imposing and his powers no, don't seem like, effective. Like his tongue, I get it. Yeah, that's handy, but it's not going to help you be Wolverine. Yeah, or Cyclops or Storm or, or really almost any of them. Yeah. Um <sighs> I get like I think in the so I I didn't read a lot of the comics, but I did watch the cartoon as a kid. Yeah. And I I'm pretty sure, I can't remember if it was Pyro or if it was Toad. But one of them was Magneto's underling and was like really snivelly and like always trying to please Magneto. And I feel like the Dwight of the X-Men universe, but like way, way worse, like no power and only surviving because he's like the ultimate kiss up or brown nose or whatever. And I think that's what Toad would have been in this movie or could have been played as. And, but they don't, I don't feel like they, did anything with it he was just a, like a an additional villain you know what i mean like he didn't have yes. character he was it just a opposition did you know that the guy who played toad is the same guy who plays darth maul oh is it i didn't know that yeah because he's like a martial artist yeah so he can do all the i thought the guy who played darth maul was black yes. nope it's it's ray park oh no that's uh jar jar binks darth vader you're thinking of uh, James Earl Jones. Well, the guy who played Darth Vader is like a super tall white guy. And then James Earl Jones yeah. came in and did his voice. Fine. Um, but yeah, so uh, X-Men. The um, villains, so, the sub-villains are okay. But compared I, to Magneto. I, I could have used someone more. Like, I'm fine with Sabretooth. It's just kind of his face kind of bothered me. But yeah. him as a character, that's fine. I could have used someone better than than toad or yes. at least make him do like have something else to him that is more frightening yeah or imposing like you said because he just comes off as a, I don't know the yoshi kind of yeah like uh, so because he, he just uses it as a third hand 
You know what I mean? Like he, I feel like there's there's with it being as long as it is and everything. Yeah. The chance I feel like someone's gonna like cut it off so easily. <laughs> yeah. Like with without like out of context, hesitation. this is a weird statement that you're making. <laughs> Yeah, that's how I am. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I could have used someone better. Yeah, no, I agree. What do you think about the X Men? The choices for this? Uh, I like the actual X Men. Um, I always, I remember as a kid, I used to think Jean Grey should be way more powerful than like Magneto because she's less limited. Yeah. As far as like Magneto, like Magneto can move metal, but she can move everything. Like Mm -hmm. she's not limited to that. It it wasn't until I got older that I realized like Magneto is just stronger. He's more in control of his power and he's driven by his anger and his hate. That's what makes yeah, he's he's limited to metal, but it's it's so much more powerful than than Jean Grey's. But then even later on, they kind of talk about how she really is, or has the potential to be super powerful. Yeah, so it's alluded to the Dark Phoenix, um, yeah, that she has this like underlying ultimate power, but she doesn't know how to control it. Yeah, and so she, she hasn't tapped into it. Yet. Yeah um which is cool there's a few things because it seems like it's pointing to something you know like in this movie like they're referencing things but not you know slamming it in your face which i and that's that but that's never something i picked up as a kid yeah Um, i definitely now you know obviously and we know what she turns into yeah but there's a few things in this movie that i i don't remember and I, like I said, I've probably seen this movie 10 times and mm. I don't remember a lot of the details that make a lot more sense. Like, I don't remember her ever putting on Cerebro. Cere- is Cerebro? Cerebro. And yeah. like, is it Bro or Cerebro? Cerebro? I thought it was Cerebro. It yeah. It, but not like Bro. I don't remember her doing that. And also, I don't remember them ever talking about logan <clears throat> having the adamantium like being experimented on and tested mm. on because i remember even going into i always thought that's just his character was like he had the adam adamantium bones yeah and i didn't realize even until the origins movie that that wasn't the case that he was experimented on or whatever yeah so his I, like I, that to me that was like a like a plot twist but then they kind of talk about it a lot in this movie I yeah i didn't remember it yeah, they. So I don't know about the comics, but I think they kind of. I. So his his healing power is his power. Yeah, and the claws. And well, the, that's that's what I was gonna say. The bone claws. I don't know where that came from. If that was originally part of his story or what. Because you're talking in the comics. Comics in the movies. Well, in the movies, it's well, it's part of the story. But, yeah, because they show it as a kid, he's got it. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if that was... I was always under the impression in the comics that, that the claws are part of him. Or not part... Yeah. Like, part of the experiment. Not from his bone... Like, I didn't think he had bone claws originally. Mm, yeah, I don't, I don't know enough about it. Yeah. But bone claws seem, like, very inefficient. Cause they're just pokers. Yeah, I mean, I guess you it can't. depends. Like, are they are they as fragile as like finger bones, or are they like femur bone? You know, like. Yeah. Well, I feel also, like with you, it being as long as it is, it would easily break. You can't slice with them, right? They're not like blades. Yeah, they're yeah they could be pointy and sharp, but not like yeah, like you said, they're not like swords. Yeah. So I, I just don't see. It seems like a weird addition, but also why, like, it's almost like retrofitting why he would have claws if it was just yeah. about, a, like, connecting metal to his bones. So they're like, oh, his bones have to come out for this to make sense. But then it's like, mm-hmm. oh, wait, well, no, that doesn't make sense, but who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, because I magic. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um but yeah, so I don't remember them ever talking about that. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, well, it's all right here. Like, this shouldn't have been a surprise. Yeah. But 
but it was. But anyways, uh, I liked how when they would show, it was just a, like a quick flashes of him kind of remembering getting experimented on. Uh huh. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. And it it looks a lot like how they like how they did that scene in Origins. Yeah. Like I'm sure they kind of drew their basis for it off mm. of that. I'm assuming. I thought that's kind of cool, almost as if that was the plan all along. Yeah. Well, Origins, it's pretty cool that they made it as a prequel to the first one. For how bad Origins is, it's really bad. It's got a lot of issues, but it's got a lot of it's got some good high some good scenes too. The it does set up the first movie pretty well. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it leads right into it pretty much. Um and that beginning scene, I believe it's Origins where him and uh yeah the war yeah that's the that's it's, one of my favorites yeah it's fantastic it's so, it's so good um but back to x-men one we'll get to yes so i wanted to talk to you about that what do you what order do you want to do this do you want to do this in release order because we're going to go through the whole series like we did with fast and furious um mm-hmm. and ultimately yeah, get we- to the point where we rank them again but do you want to go okay. through it trilogy by trilogy where we do the x-men trilogy the first class trilogy, the Wolverine trilogy. Do you want to do it in release order? Uh, I say we do trilogy by trilogy. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. So, so we'll, we'll do this one and then the Wolverine one, or the uh, other way I think the other way because I want to end with Logan because I think that's the best one. Yeah, that's true. That's a good idea. Um, I mean, I know it's, it's crazy that we've talked about it, but I want to talk about it in has the worst and the best. Yes. I want to talk about it in light of it as a series, not just the movie. Because we talked about it, I think, when it came out. Yeah, we did a little bit, I think. Um, But we're going to do whatever we want, all right, people? If we talk about a movie twice, we talk about a movie twice. Get over it. Uh, I'm just kidding. Don't get over it. Let us know. Don't leave us. We need your attention. (laughs) Um, X-Men. Back on track. It is... It's okay, right? Like, it's not great. It's not bad. It's got weird campy moments, but it's got a decent, like, it's a decent entry into this world. Yeah. They, they show you that there's a lot more going on and that there's a lot of room for them to, you know, expand into. And I think they do a decent job at it, but they lose sight of it along the way at certain points. Yeah. <sighs> I, there was oh there was a scene okay the the machine that magneto has that yes. he uses to uh-huh. i guess what turn people into mutants uh mutants does he just abandon that after this because i really don't remember that ever being in anything else well it gets destroyed yeah okay so does it, not he, he abandon the 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 plight, the the, the <clears throat> desire to turn people into mutants. Yeah, you have to. This is the way comic books work. Like, okay. if the heroes stop your plan, then you lose. You can't ever you try it again. <laughs> no, you're right. Like, it would definitely, if that was his plan in the first one, they let him survive and he, if like, rebuilds, he should try it again and again and Maybe again. Maybe in a different way or, yeah. you know, and each one gets closer and closer and whatever yeah no he um he builds an army to fight the humans and i think in the next one yeah so that was my other question is is toad and Sabretooth and mystique the only people actually working for him or are they the only ones that we see in this movie he's got no one right um at this point i don't think there's anyone else but i i don't know that's sad that's for such a powerful guy like he's got a a wimpy team yeah other than mystique mystique is useful sabertooth is useful but toad is pointless sabertooth can be useful but i feel like he's his his powers aren't like that great as there's probably a lot of other guys out there that can do at least that much yeah that's true although he did like this is one of the things that frustrated me watching this movie was Logan or Wolverine kept getting knocked out. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that doesn't seem like a character trait that he has in any other movie. Yeah, no. He he well he he's not as ripped. That's true. One. That's uh, that's the problem. 
Um, another thing that bothered me about Sabretooth was that, and I, I like that he's got like a, he can like kind of roar, you know, like a Sabretooth. Yeah. But I don't like how like casually small, like he's like, he doesn't look like he's roaring. He's like opening his mouth and the sound should be like, <laughs> Ah, <laughs> like it's so like barely opening, but then they do yeah. a roar and it doesn't match to me. I would like to see him like get mad, you know, and like roar. Yeah, how would it go? Rare, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they. I also felt like they made Storm a really weak character. Uh, yeah. Until she came in with like the lightning eyes, like Thor, she always felt kind of like pathetic. And I was like, oh, that's a kind, weird choice. Like she's really limited if she's indoors. There's not a whole lot she can do. Yeah. Which I think is true to the character, but like she never she seemed make- like a strong character. Yeah. Until she became like, now lightning's in my face and I'm going to blow you up. Which. Now, that is scene weird. that we talked about when she says, like, oh, you know what happens to a toad when he's hit by lightning? She she hits the pole that he's holding on to. Right? Uh-huh. I think she hit Why his tongue, hit- right? Oh, I thought she hits the pole and it zaps him. Well, his tongue is wrapped around the pole. and she's- Why not just like hit him in the head? Well, he can't kill people, Taylor. Okay, then hit him in the butt. I don't know. Do something. <laughs> A little more debilitating than <clears throat> zapping his tongue. Well, I don't think she can... Control it completely? Control it completely in that yeah i don't know i assumed that maybe Be- she could strike because it was metal and it was like a conductor. yeah yeah but like like magneto said earlier is like because um they're all tied up or they're all pinned down inside of the statue of liberty i remember yeah i, I like that scene and uh magneto's like oh cyclops says storm fry him and magneto's like oh good idea this is a conductor well like basically we'll all die and that seemed like that just went away because everything's yeah. still a conductor. Everything's still made out of metal. They would all have gotten zapped. That makes sense. You're not. Yeah, you can't create the lightning from inside. It's got to come from outside. And oh, yeah, I no, mean... I'm saying when she zapped Toad, they were still all in the Statue of Liberty, still all touching metal. That was all connected. Like it still would have been a conductor, right? But but they were outside. Right, so she can zap something outside. I'm, yeah, I don't know. But it's a, if it's a conductor, it, it carries yeah, no, electricity. Right. Like it, it's, maybe maybe she did just hit his tongue then. Yeah, maybe. But I would still yeah. think. I mean, your body is a conductor too. Like uh, if if I'm holding your hand like we do all the time, and I grabbed right. electricity, it would go through me and into you as well. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, she's not as smart as I don't know. Well, it's just funny that yeah. the filmmakers pointed it out and they then, went out of their way to point out that yeah. issue, and but then went against it anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, no. I this movie, like I said, it's still it's, enjoyable. It's pretty good. I, like I said, the, the fighting felt very slow. Yeah, which is a problem if that. of the '90s, right? Like or the early 2000s like choreograph choreography for movies is pretty bad and it's still it's still pretty bad now but they cover it with shaky cam and quick cuts and stuff like that yeah um i appreciate when it's locked off but you have to have really good choreography for that to work and they just didn't really there's a couple cool moments like it's goofy but when wolverine's spinning around the the point on the statue of liberty's uh tiara i didn't like that you didn't like it i mean it's dumb no. but like it's a cool shot you know it, it was well i think the problem was it was just, it was too slow yeah it was maybe. like a slow motion and i was yeah. just like okay <laughs> what like you, if they had done that in real time then i could get behind that what's your opinion about the uh what do you want to wear yellow spandex comment um I remember thinking at the time, I was like, oh, hey, look it. And then now I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Because, it, it's a bit much. Because why would he choose it, yellow spandex? Why yellow? That's exactly. I mean, if he had said just spandex. Yeah. Fine. That's that's fine. But 
yeah the yellow it's like what do you want to do wear yellow and brown spandex with a a a cowl over your head that's got points on the top yeah yeah like it's it's a bit much it was it was just dumb yeah um i think they they either should have they either he either should have just said spandex or or what do you want it to be yellow like although i don't know he could call it like a like a like a red and blue like a superman yeah you know because there's been instances in in other marvel movies where they reference a character from dc like i think they do it in spider-man they talk about superman this and that so superman can exist but like oh what you want us to look like superman yeah or something that just but yellow is so dumb yeah no i, agree. Like, I get that that's what they wear but but well, we're that's... not they're not supposed to know that yeah that's what wolverine wears specifically right yeah when he's x-man yeah <laughs> um yeah i i agree i think that was too on the nose for it to be like a good subtle like joke good, like you know joke yeah um, um what else about this movie we we didn't i mean we didn't really go through it but there's not not a ton of point i think most people have seen it if they're listening to it at this at this point oh, I'm, if you haven't seen it then you don't want to yeah that's fair it's it's just one of those but i think hugh, always... hugh jackman was great as wolverine patrick stewart is great as professor x uh ian mckellen is great as magneto um i feel like the girl who did rogue did an okay job but her accent was so thick like it was just kind of anytime she talked it felt kind of cringy does she have a real life accent because she's from she's also in or was in true blood and she also has that same accent oh is it her actual it's i don't know but it's hard to listen to if that is it's luckily she doesn't have a whole lot of lines yeah the guy who plays Iceman, bobby did a good job i think as like being the character oh yeah yeah um who else there's someone oh the guy did i say cyclops already cyclops i thought was a good choice for scott summers scott summers um and i I feel like the girl who played Jean gray was good but they didn't give her a lot to do in this movie halle berry i think wasn't a great choice at least the way they wrote the character in this one i think she she's fine later on but yeah in this one the way they she's used real her. limited and everything. Yeah. It almost is a, a waste to have Halle Berry. Well, yeah. Um, I'm excited to go through this series, though. It's been a long time since I've gone through it, since I've seen it all. When was the last time you saw X2? Probably when it came out. I don't remember rewatching that one very much. I think I've only seen that one a couple times. Yeah. I've seen this. I've seen X Men more than any of the other ones. Oh, yeah. No, same here. Um, I remember not liking. There's something about Striker that I really did not like. In X2. In X2, but I like Striker as a comic book villain. Gotcha. I think he's interesting because he doesn't have any powers. He's just motivated. Yeah, I guess. But we before we get to X2, we were talking about doing. I believe it's called an Open Secret, which is a documentary about Brian Singer. Uh, potentially maybe being a pedophile. I don't really know, but Brian Singer is the one who directed this X2 and first class. I believe he might've done days of future past and said, um, so did he not do three. No, someone else did three. Um, yeah, you know what? I want to say that was, uh... Oh, is Brett Radner. Radner yeah. yeah. Um, but, I think that will be a good one to do before we continue on in the series to kind of have that as a perspective of what we're watching and talking about and stuff. So next week we're going to do an open secret. Then the week after that, we'll jump into X2 and continue on going through this movie, these movies. Yeah. Sounds good. But anything else? X X X-Men one. How did, how would you rank this negative five to five? Um, I give it a three. Yeah, I give it a two. I think I think it could be better, but it did pretty good. Oh, it definitely could be better, but for being eighteen years old, I, I think it's it holds up for yeah. the most part. Yeah, no, it holds up really well compared to a lot of other comic book movies. I think it's probably going to hold up more than even X Two and Last Stand. Yeah, for sure. 
But uh, yeah, so we'll be back next week with an open secret. You can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and go over to Patreon. And if you want to help support us for a dollar, you get access to all our episodes two weeks in advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye-bye.